Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Nick and this is On the Dharma, a series of introductory videos where we take some concepts of Buddhism and meditation and mindfulness and we try to apply them and explore how to apply them in our daily lives so that we can improve our experience. Um, I'm, talking, I'm gonna talk to you this week about um, the rules of seated meditation set out by a Zen Buddhist monk, particularly Dogen. I read Dogen extensively in college, and he's attributed to being the patriarch of a particular school of Japanese Zen Buddhism called Soto Zen Buddhism. He lived in Japan in the 1200s, and I have here his book, The Moon in a Dewdrop, which is a collection of essays and instructions and even talks that he gave um, in Japan to practitioners. And um, I read it extensively in college and beyond, and it's really a fantastic source. Nothing I ever tell you, nothing I can say on here, nothing at all will ever be as simple and concise and perfect as the instructions in this book. So I highly recommend this book. It's The Moon in a Dewdrop, The Writings of Dogen. And I'll put a link in the description as well. Um, but in it, he's got instructions for Zazen. If you remember, Zazen is seated meditation uh, for Zen Buddhism. He's got an essay in here called Rules for Zazen, or in Japanese, Zazen Gi. Gi meaning the customs or the rules for how to do Zazen. So I'm gonna read for you and we're gonna talk about some of these points and discuss them and think about how we can apply them in the modern era, right? Because this was written in the 1200s in Japanese. And here I am reading it to you in 2020 in English. <laughs> so there's a little bit of unpacking we might have to do. So here we go. Practi practicing Zen is Zazen. For Zazen, a quiet place is suitable. Lay out a thick mat. Do not let in drafts or smoke, rain or dew. Protect and maintain the place where you settle your body. There are examples from the past of sitting on a diamond seat and sitting on a flat stone covered with a thick layer of grass. Day or night, the place of sitting should not be dark. It should be kept warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Okay, so let's pause there and talk about some of those instructions. Okay, a quiet place is suitable. Make sure that you don't have construction noises or TV noises or music or dishwasher noises or laundry noises or anything like that. Try and find somewhere as quiet as possible for you to meditate in. That makes it easier for you to concentrate on what you're doing, right? Because meditating is not a passive exercise. Meditating is an active concentrating exercise. Protect and maintain the place where you settle your body. Protect it from chaos. Protect it from dirt and dust. Protect and maintain it. Make sure that it's comfortable. Make sure that you have mentally set it aside as your mindfulness place. This can be a chair, a room, a whole building, uh, if you have one. It's, it's easy, uh, but it's also a lifelong practice, so it can get hard. <laughs> So this should not be your bed. This can be your couch, I guess. Uh, it's probably best if it's not. It can be a chair that you set aside somewhere. Just something to signal to your brain, okay, I only do meditation there. Psychologists, uh, they say that the bed should only be used for the S's, sleep and sex. You shouldn't do anything else there that can lead to trouble sleeping, that can lead to other things, because you're training your brain that whenever you're laying in bed, it's time to sleep. And same thing here. Your meditation space should only be used for the M or the Z, meditation or Zazen, <laughs> which are the same thing. You should only, you should always unconsciously think when you see this, that this is the space for meditation, okay? Let's continue. Set aside all involvements and let the myriad things rest. Zazen is not thinking of good, not thinking of bad. It is not conscious endeavor. It is not introspection. Okay, so let's pause there. What is he saying here? 
set aside all involvements and let the myriad things rest. If you've decided to set aside 30 minutes a day or 60 minutes a day or five minutes a day to meditate, make sure that those five minutes aren't busy ever. Make sure that those five minutes are blocked off um, as hard and as fast as you can make it happen. You should never, ever, ever have a reminder pop up on your phone or anything like that. You should never be disturbed during this kind of thing because you want it to be, like I said, training your brain. You don't want to mess with your phone if you're trying to go to sleep in, in your bed because your brain will think it's not time to sleep, it's time to play on the phone. Similarly with meditation, in this space, in this time, whenever 6.30 rolls around, if that's your time, you want your brain to start to move in that direction already unconsciously, okay? And let the myriad things rest. What does that mean? That means that you should not be thinking of your other engagements. Don't be thinking about what's going on elsewhere. Be where you are. Be in the moment for, for meditation. Let the myriad things rest, meaning... All the fires that are going on there that are burning in through your life, you know, all the little fires that you would have to go put out and require your attention and just divert you from yourself. Let those be for a moment. Just try and let those be for the moment that you're meditating. Okay. Zazen is not thinking of good, not thinking of bad. It is not conscious endeavor. It is not introspection. So it's not thinking of good, all good. It's not thinking of bad, all bad. It's not conscious endeavor. You don't want to think about stuff, <laughs> whether it's all good or all bad, or thinking about yourself. You don't want to think about stuff, but you also don't want to not think about stuff. And that's the hard part. That's the training part. That's the wisdom part that comes into it. It is not a conscious endeavor, but it is not a completely unconscious endeavor either. It's an activity that you do, but you don't want to devote your mind to whatever thoughts are passing. Similarly, you don't want to ignore everything and ignore your mind. Mindfulness is not concentration on everything. That would weigh us down and we can't do that. We just simply can't concentrate fully on a thousand things. We can only concentrate on one thing at a time. And why don't we set aside a time where we concentrate on concentration itself. That's meditation right there. That's how to experience mindfulness, is just mindful, you're aware. Your mind is quiet, essentially, but it's also not off. It's not switched in the off position. Okay, let's continue. Do not desire to become a Buddha. Let sitting or lying down drop away. Be moderate in eating and drinking. Be mindful of the passage of time. And engage yourself in Zazen as though saving your head from fire. Okay. So I'm going to try meditation for the first time. I have never done meditation, never heard of anything, but I know that meditation is something that people that become Buddhas do. So when I sit down, I'm going to try and become a Buddha wrong. <laughs> That's the first thing he says not to do. Do not desire to become a Buddha. What I mean is don't try to be an expert at it the first time. Don't try and be perfect at meditation on your first time or your second time or your 500,000th time. It's not a matter of trying to be perfect or be like anyone else. It's trying to be where you are. It's trying to be who you are. It's trying to be like you are. It's trying to be what you are. And doing so doesn't require trying. You can be who you are without having to try. You can be what you are and like you are and who you are without having to try. And that's, that's why meditation is an effortless effort. Okay, there's a lot of things like that, especially in Zen Buddhism, where it's actionless action or effortless effort or action and non-action at the same time or neither action nor action. It's confusing. It's supposed to be. Meditate on it. See what you can come up with. Okay? Let's let sitting or lying down drop away. 
Now, what does that mean? He's essentially saying meditation is not thinking about sitting. It's not thinking about lying down. It's not thinking about what you're doing. You're close. That's, that's part of it. But you're actually letting that activity drop away. So there's no mindfulness. There's just mind. There's just mind. And your mind naturally is a mirror, which has thoughts that come by, come through, and then they pass on like passing clouds. And it's completely possible to achieve this by letting your activity drop away from your consciousness, from your conscious effort, okay? One of the guided meditations that I've done in my life that really actually hits this kind of meditation perfectly um, was given by Deepak Chopra uh, in Colorado whenever I was uh, 16 or 17. I actually wasn't supposed to be there. Uh, I was too young. <laughs> I was supposed to be 18, but my grandparents thankfully snuck me in and had, and I had the opportunity to have many life-changing experiences at a very young age. But essentially this guided meditation started with a sentence, right? So you would close your eyes and clear your mind as much as you could and envision the sentence, I am Nick, or I am a banker, or I am a postman, or I am a farmer, whatever, whatever identifier that you wanted to use, or you could use multiple. I am Nick, male, academic, whatever. And you would repeat that sentence in your mind three times. I am Nick. I am Nick. I am Nick. And you would do this consciously, you know, quietly to yourself. And then you would drop one thing off. You would drop the end word off. I am, I am, I am. And then you would drop another word off. I, I, I. And then you would drop away I. And that is meditation. That silence is meditation. That active mindful silence is meditation. I hope that you've learned something and um, taken something from this that you can take home and practice. I hope that you've enjoyed it and found it interesting. I'll put the link to this book in the description. Tell me about your experiences. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions or just want to share what happened, how, how you meditated, how you did when you were meditating, um, please do so. I'm happy to hear about those and talk about those and discuss those experiences. And um, I enjoy it. I enjoy it and I hope you do too. I wish you all the best health and happiness and joy during the coronavirus pandemic and beyond, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.